Hey guys, it's Diane from the Paint Factory. It's um, Tuesday, I believe. It's probably about 3.30. I know I said I'd come on live at 3. I can never do it. I, I am just that unorganized. So I want to wait to see if anybody's around. And if you are around and you can see me and you can hear me, um, let me know and let me know where you're from. I don't know where you're from. Mississippi Pearls is the first one. Hey, I'm sorry I am late. Um, so I am my friend Janet. Okay, now we can begin. Um, I'm in a different room. So um, normally I'm over here in my front room. This is my uh, dining room that gets used maybe once, twice a year. But I have like a mass of things on my table that I want to show you. So I have, um, I'm kind of like, oh, there's so much here. So I want to um, tell you why I'm doing this Facebook Live. This Facebook Live is going to be about upholstery and the simple tools that you need to be able to do upholstery because I think a lot of times people um, are scared away from it um, and I want to be able to tell you that if I can do upholstery gosh darn it you can um, and, and so my idea about doing upholstery came from last week because if you remember last week I was talking about my chair that I'm going to get upholstered and the big discussion I had with my husband about um, actually these two which disgusting brown do you like best um throwing those away because my husband saw sense i spoke to him very adult like and um told him that th this was not going to happen why don't do this to us what you really need is this beautiful one here and um yeah neither of those th those have gone and i said so really we sh you know we should do this one right and he said it's not mid-century and i'm like yet yeah, it is this is totally mid-century and he looked at it and he said that's what he said and then he walked off and i looked at him and i said so I'll order the blue. I'll order the blue fa the fabric, right? I'm gonna order the blue. Love you. And you know, I could have been very gracious and I could have gone over to him and thanked him for being open-minded and working with me on this. And then I remembered who I am. And then I thought, I won, I won. So this is what it's going to be. So I started thinking about upholstery and there are so many, you know, chairs and benches and lots of things on, you know, Craig's book, Facebook Live. Um, what do you do if you want that piece? It has beautiful bones, but you hate the fabric. Now, I'm gonna get slammed for this, I am sure. Some people will say you can paint over fabric. Chalk paint actually is really good for painting over fabric. I'm sure it is. I, yeah, I've seen it on lots of pages. People have demonstrations how to do it. And actually, if I was a smart business person, which you all know by now, I am not. If I was a smart business person, I would say to you all, I actually have an affiliate link with Wise Owl. So if you get an old piece of, you know, an old chair or anything like that, buy the Wise Owl paint, which is probably, I don't know, 30-ish buy a can of the wise owl wax to seal it um you would be happy
happy I would get a kickback um, and do it. And I can't do that. I, I cannot, cannot tell you to paint fabric. I can't do it. Um, and so I'm, I'm not gonna encourage you to do that. Uh, part of the reason, there's a lot of reasons why I'm against doing that. One of the reasons is that at my time of life, I want the best things and I am not gonna settle for painted fabric. I deserve, <laughs> I deserve the best and so do you. Um, and so it, it does take a lot of time, it takes a lot of pain and ultimately you're painting over old fabric and that to me is the main clincher because yes, I do want the finer things in life. I am a snob, proudly. I, I will own that to the end of the day. I am a snob, I want good quality. I don't wanna pay for good quality. I want to pay cheap. And so there's ways around that. Um, you're painting over old fabric so there's a good chance that if it has a pattern to it the pattern is going to still show through the main clincher for me is that if you have ever stripped a chair or a bench down to um, the foam the dacron you will realize how disgusting it really is in the crevices i mean there are fingernails there's um, there's just stuff just horrible stuff and actually when I leave actually most people when they leave an upholstery class you just want to wipe your entire body over with you know sanitizer because it is that disgusting and I cannot paint over that the idea of putting paint over dirt and you might say i can clean i'll clean the fabric that absolutely you can clean the fabric but you are not going to get down in all the little spots where people's dna and other things i had um this brings um a little story i just posted i think either today or yesterday my um cheetah cowhide French bench and when I bought that I, I'm not sure where I bought it from actually maybe Craigslist um, so I knew I was going to upholster it um, because the fabric was just shot um, sorry is this a tapestry no it's actually um, a wall covering I, I just got it from anthropology um, when I pulled back the fabric of the French bench, um, it had, you know, the, the foam and the Dacron, and I swear there's probably a picture of that bench in some police department's records because it looked like a crime scene. It, it, there was like just this big puddle of, pinkish body fluid I don't know where it was but if you painted over that fabric you wouldn't know it was there and that might not bother you but because I've actually stripped things down and I know what is there that's why I can never in good faith tell you to paint fabric what you need to do is do upholstery so and it's really it's not that hard it's quite you know a simple chair does not take a lot of effort um, you need a few tools which I'm going to show you um, and I will go through what you need now I have taken um, probably five different sessions of upholstery classes um, I would encourage anybody to do that. Go and look at your um, 
adult learning centres, your you know community colleges. I actually go to Portland Community College. Um, and if you look on their brochures or their websites, sometimes upholstery classes are hidden underneath um, the DIY. So look under DIY classes and hopefully you can find an upholstery class. It is worth um, its weight in gold. The, the basic steps that you are taught are, you, you use them forever and you know, you know what tools to get and the different steps. So that said, let me, how should, so this is going to be your Bible. I know it's, it's upside down. You're not going to be able to see it. This is called Spruce, um, step-by-step -step guide to upholstery and design. I actually bought this in a fabric store. Um, you can get this on Amazon. Um, again, I have no link. It's just, this is a book that when I upholster and I forget what I'm doing, which is often the case, um, this is my Bible. It's actually very similar to the steps that my upholsterer instructor tells, well, taught, taught me. Um, or tells me what to do. That's probably more succinct. So if you, if you are thinking on doing a pull straight, buy this. It's, I think it's $26 I just checked. So you have your book. Good pair of scissors. Um, these are not a good pair of scissors because my kids have been using them. A good pair of scissors really is very, very useful. If you are going to do, let's say you just want to do one chair, you can get the handheld staple gun, the stapler, and just work away. If you think you're going to do more than one chair, you know, maybe you have like here, I've got six dining room chairs. Um, it might be better to invest in a professional um, stapler. This is Fasco. Um, this is like, choo, choo, choo. this is um, an Italian bad boy. Um, when I bought it, I think it was probably about 140. I actually just went on Amazon and I think it's about, let me see, 90, no, $100. So this you need an air compressor, um, but this is a beautiful thing. The difference between um, one of these staple guns and a handheld one is um, the staplers. So this is, my gun takes fine wire. I don't know whether you can see that. Can you see really, really? skinny skinny staplers this is a quarter of an inch you tend to use quarter of an inch 80 percent of the time um these two together you're going to get a really tight nice um tension to your fabric i think that's one of the things that people tend not to do is they don't really kind of make their fabric torn when they staple it. So um, it will give you definitely a much more cleaner line. So um, what will be your best friend is one of these babies, which is a staple remover. When you do upholstery, um, you're supposed to remove all the fabric check check on the foam and the dacron if that needs to be replaced if it has crime scenes all over them um take them off but you need to remove every single staple on your chair for some reason i have three of them and i think i have three of them because when i put one down i never know where it is and so three i'm i'm a mess these, well, this one is another, this is the tack remover. 
can we see that really really sharp baby um this is for um removing tax and if it's a really old antique place um piece sometimes they don't use staples they would use the old-fashioned tacks and then this is just really easy to dig um and dig it out and for some reason i have two of these i'm like a kleptomaniac you will need a little hammer um this is for what it's this this is for if you're removing um, staples and maybe they break off and so you're going to have little edges sticking up, you can tap them down. You can also um, tap down your um, nail head trim, which, you know, the nail heads. Oops, can you see that? So I have a box here called dads um, this has a thousand nail head trims when I did my French day bed I used the entire box um, and you can get nail heads from Joanne's that kind of place but they're way more expensive than buying bulk I think this cost me about $18 um, Joanne sells maybe I think 25 for three four dollars so it adds up um I also have another hammer surprise this one's my favorite one because it has the rubber tip so if you're doing something really difficult hard this one and this is um a magnet see so that size magnet which really helps this one is if you're gonna tap on this tapping it in it's not gonna damage the top and for some reason i have three again um a glue gun a glue gun is um i hate my glue gun and i these are the glue gun sticks i hate hate this this um is what you use to put your trim your well around the edging if you're using that um i burn so much my skin using this this is cardboard strip now what you will use this for is um once you have your top cover of fabric and you want to put your well or your piping you will um, staple this on the edge and then you hot glue your well to this um, some people don't use this i've just been taught that you always um, should use it because it pushes the fabric down and it gives you a really nice um, clean finish razor blades single edged razor blades i have uh, i have a box of a hundred i go through these like crazy because i use these when i paint too um this you will use to cut your fabric once you sellotape to, uh, sellotape to, once you've um use your staplers again it gives you a really clean finish um that your scissors oh that's my daughter leaving your scissors are gonna um not get clean this will get you a clean edge what else um this this is like my favorite toy this is for um using the webbing which is this thing here it's kind of, it's really thick burlap now again one of the things with um old um chairs if you paint over the fabric you don't know what the structure is like underneath so eventually old chairs if they have this this will oftentimes start disintegrating and this is going to be your support for um 
where you sit. So you really need to know that this is in good condition. Um, this you shove in and you pull. It, I can't tell you how rewarding it is to put on new webbing on a chair. It's the most bizarre thing and I'm almost ashamed to admit that, but I could do new webbing all day long. Um, I think the last thing is my electric knife. Not just for Turkey. So I got this from, I think I got this from Goodwill actually. Um, do people really use this for turkey? This um, is used to cut your foam. So if you need new foam, um, you will use the existing foam, hopefully, as a pattern. And then if it's more than an inch thick, you will never be able to cut through that foam. So you use your electric knife to zoom through it. So, I think that's, I think that's pretty much most of my tools. Now again, if you're doing really simple stuff, you might not need all this, but I kind of, again, went to my garage and just pulled a lot of things out so that you would have a, an idea of some of the basics. Um, Again, this book, it, it's a really good book. It, I mean, it, you know, it goes, has pictures. It's a real step-by-step. -step. Um, this, if you feel indulgent, this is really where you're gonna get the nice professional look. Um, and again, upholstery is not that difficult. I'm gonna put all the links to everything or most of the things that I have um, on this post so that you know. I know um, Oswald is a good, see this is CS Osborne. They sell a lot of upholstery tools. Um, there are a gazillion YouTube um, tutorials on how to do upholstery, how to strip a piece, how to, um, you know, cut new foam if you need to, how to do the cuts for, you know, the arms. Um, and I have watched um, one YouTube channel many, many times because it gets addictive. So there is so much knowledge out there that you, anybody can do upholstery. Um, you don't need to be painting nasty fabric. Really, you, you don't need to be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. Again, you deserve the best you know, that you can do. And you know, if you're gonna spend $60 on paint product, you can buy some really nice fabric for $60. And it's gonna be a chair that you know it's gonna be clean. Don't we all need clean stuff? Um, and it's gonna be, you know, fabric of your choice. And plus, if you strip down your chair, it means that you can paint the frame if you want. If you just paint the fabric, it would be hard to paint the frame because you can't get into the nooks and crannies, which is what um, is my biggest beef about that. We are, well, I'm, I'm assuming that you're all around about my age. So we are all, discerning people who want the best that we can possibly get. It's that simple. I am unapologetic. I don't care. I'm a snob. I want good stuff, you know, and if I can figure out something online and learn, um, 
gosh darn it, I'm going to do that. Um, but so there you have it. I'm not going to ever promote pain fabric. I'm not going to do it. And so if you want to give me flack, that's okay. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. But please do yourself a favor, just start looking around, see if there's any um, places where you can actually take an upholstery class. It's very addictive. I mean, look at my hands, gnarly fingers now, but flipping love doing upholstery. Um, and you, you know, there's so many pieces out there that just need, you know, a little touch, a nice little one yard of fabric and boom. So please, you deserve good stuff. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I know I'm seeing comments here, but I, if I start replying to comments, I'm just going to lose my trail of thought. So if you have any questions, um, put them in the comments and I will read them. Oh, this, did I tell you about this thing? This is, um, a seam, um, it's when you undo all your sewing. Um, we're not allowed to use these in upholstery class because my instructor keeps saying, you are not making your grandmother's dress. And so we always have to use razor blades. Sometimes we steep these in. Um, I cannot sew to save my life. And so eventually um, when I try, um, not to say, Oh, I know old Kuris. Why would you do that? I'm. I I just it. You know, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should do something. You really. It's just nasty, and I like I say I know other people do it and love it and good for them, but. Not here, not doing it, so. Thank you all my lovelies. I will um, talk to you maybe next week. My unicorn piece just sold. Seam Ripper! Thank you Cynthia. A seam ripper, yes. Um, I, yes, because when I do my cushion covers and I go and show my professor, my instructor, and he's like, uh, go and take that apart and eventually he has to do it for me um, th this is what you need so again so yeah my unicorn piece sold today it left the building I love that piece loved it and so now I can go on to my new piece um, and like I said, it's a it's a thing of one in one out. I'm not going to be churning out things. So now I have my new piece. I have to take a few days just to figure out what's going to look pretty good on it. And we'll go from there. So hopefully next week um, there may be some progress. So again, thank you all so much for, for indulging me as you always do. And um, I will talk to you later. Thank you.